Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. In this video, I'm going to talk about an application that I haven't covered in the past, but one, over the years, I've received numerous emails from people asking me to do videos on. That application is Photolab by DxO. As a matter of fact, just yesterday, DxO released the latest version of Photolab, Photolab 4. With that release comes a huge sale. You could save quite a bit of money if you purchase Photolab 4 during this sale. In the description below the video, I'll have a link to their website. You could check it out and download a trial version, fully working trial version, or you could just purchase it outright if you'd like. Now in this video, I'm just going to kind of give you an overview of the workspace and some of the tools in Photolab 4. Um, for those of you that aren't familiar with Photolab 4, it's a non-destructive raw editor, simpler, similar to Lightroom on one, Luminar, and many others. Uh, it has some unique features that many of you may find very useful. Now, when you first open Photolab 4, you're going to open up in the Photo Library tab. What you need to do is just navigate to wherever your images are on your computer. I happen to have all my images on an external hard drive, and you can see that I went through the folders and drilled down to this folder. This folder has 12 images in it. You could see there's the grid view of the images. You could click through the images there. If you would like, when you're clicked on an image, you could go up here and just pull down and you could see then a larger version of the image that you're clicked on. And once you decide uh, an image you want to work on, you could just double click on the thumbnail of the image and it will open up in the customize tab or you could just click on the customize tab and it will bring that image over into the customize area where you could now process the image. Now, over on the left at the top, we have a navigator window. Below that, we have metadata. That's the camera and exposure information, and some metadata like my, my copyright info and stuff. We have keywords uh, for the image. And then we have advanced history. It really records every single movement you do of any slider, every brush stroke, everything is recorded in the history tab so that you could go back through steps. Um, even if you, uh, let's say, apply a preset, you could over here see over here on the far right hand side, there's presets. If you apply a preset, all the edits that are in the preset will be put in a folder in the history tab. Then you could do your own edits on top of it. So we'll have your edits separated from the edits from the preset, but you then could jump through any part you'd like uh, through. So history tab is pretty cool in this application. Now along the bottom we have the film strip. You can make that larger or smaller. Just go between that and the viewer and you'll see your cursor turns into that odd little shape there and you can move it around. You could also close down the left or right panel. Just go right to the edge of the panel and you can see that your cursor turns or changes. Just click with the left mouse button you'll close it. Go back and you could reopen it. Now on the right hand side these are your edits and, you know, all your editing tools. And this is a workspace all itself. Now, when you first use Photolab 4 and open it up, you're going to be presented with this workspace. Along the top is the histogram. Below that is what's new in Photolab 4. Um, specifically, we have this new uh, denoising technology. It has really great denoising built in. And um, in a future video, I'll go into much more detail on this because it deserves its own video. It is very, very good. Instant watermarking, so you could add watermarks to the images and preview on them and put them in certain areas, change the blend mode of the image, the opacity of the, uh, the watermark, I should say. And you could do that all there. And then it has this new redesigned, reimagined um, HSL panel uh, right there. So that's there. And then you have some basic tools. Now, I mentioned this is kind of like one workspace. We go over here on the left where it says workspaces and we click there, you can see there's another one called DxO Standard. And that just has some basic tools. And then if I go over to workspaces again and we go to DxO Advanced, we have more advanced tools. So that's just kind of the, you know, the default when you open it. But along the top, you have all the tools there in different kind of categories. Uh, for instance, under lights, we have anything that will affect tone is right here. And under color, we have anything that affects color. So we have all these individual tools for color. Uh, next to that, we have detail, and we could uh, have the denoising and sharpness and so on there. Next to that is geometry, so lens corrections and so on. Then local adjustments. Now I should talk about local adjustments along the top. You could see then we have this button, local adjustments, and if I click on that, we're in, we have a brush. 
but if I right click on the image you can see that there's also a graduated filter, control points, auto masking, eraser, you could add a new mask, you could reset everything or go back to the brush. When you want to get out of the local adjustment mode, or if you add, I should say, if you add a local adjustment, it will show up over here. But if you want to get out of the local adjustment mode, just click on the little hand tool and you're back here. Now along the top too, we also have different uh, views. We have before and after. Now all that was done to this were lens corrections and it corrected the vignetting. You can see that. And then we have this, um, this side like slider view of before and after. If you want to look at that, we have a full screen view. If you want to get out of that, hit the escape key. We have the fit to screen view. We have a one-to-one -one view where you zoom in. You also could zoom in, just double click right on the image and you could zoom in to 100%. I'll write that, like, like, right like that. We have this little drop down here and you could zoom out or zoom in from 50% to 200%. We have the hand tool. We have a crop tool. We have a white balance tool. We could straighten the image with the level. We could repair any things that, you know, uh, like uh, sensor spots or you know blemishes on someone's face, something like that, and red eye removal tool. So all that's going across the top. But we get back over here to this right hand side. This is where we're actually going to start processing our image. Now, if you're like me, you probably won't use many of these. Uh, for example, I don't think I use exposure compensation, or I don't find the need to use it all the time. But you could see that on many of these tools, I have this little star. Um, like on, oh, what to do, just click on it. Like you turn it on, click on it, turn it off. But then what happens when you kind of favorite those tools, you'll go right here and it will only show the tools you have favorited in each of the categories. So you could uh, probably streamline your processing a little bit with that. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do some simple processing to this image to give you an idea of the processing in engine that is in PhotoLab 4 and how powerful it is. Now, first of all, if you're in really a real hurry, uh, what I recommend you do is just jump right to DxO Clear View Plus. If I roll that open and turn that on, you can see that it processed the image. Now, that's a little bit too HDR for me, but it has an intensity slider. So I could just kind of dial it down with the intensity slider. And you could see how it really does full processing with one tool. And if you look over at the history tab, you can see every micro movement I did at that intensity slider recorded. So the history tab is very powerful here. But for the sake of this video, and I wanna show you a little bit more of what the um, tools do to process an image, I'm not gonna use the DxO Clearview Plus for this image, but I wanted to just show it to you because you could see how you could really process an image very quickly if you need to. But I'll turn that off and I'll show you some of the sliders that you may be more used to from the applications that you most often use. For example, in Selective Tone, if I turn that on, we have highlights, midtone, shadows, and blacks. So I'll bring highlights down a little bit. I'll open up those midtones. Maybe I'll open up the shadows a touch too, and then I'll just kind of bring down the black slider a little bit. Maybe that's a little bit too much. So there's selective tone. I could go down to contrast and you don't have to like click the on button like I did up there. You could just start moving a slider. So I'll, I'll turn contrast up. It has micro contrast too, but uh, sometimes on some of these landscape images, it makes it look a little bit, in my opinion, a little bit over the top. So I just want to use conventional contrast on this image. So I'll add some contrast. Now I'll jump over to the color tab and I want to go to the HSL, the blue on the HSL and I'm going to bring luminance down. I want to darken my blue sky a little bit. I'll add a little more saturation to that blue sky and maybe a little uniformity. You see if I move it to the left, it makes the white clouds more white. If I move it to the right, it gives a little more of a blue tint. I think it makes it look a little more natural. If I move it to the right and um, I could go through and maybe Brighten up the yellows a touch, add a little more saturation to the yellows. Um, I don't know, that's pretty good. It's a pretty colorful image, so I don't think I really need uh, to do much more with uh, color in general uh, with, the, with the image. Uh, we could go then to the Detail tab, and I mentioned the denoising. What I recommend you do as far as denoising, again, I'll do a video on this in the future where I'll go in a lot more detail, is zoom in. I like to zoom in like at 200% so I could see 
the noise. Now this is shot, you can see over here on the left, it was shot at an ISO 100, so there really is barely any noise. Now it has three types of technology. It has this HQ technology, Prime. It has Deep Prime, uh, from what I understand, it's machine learning neural network type thing. You've probably heard it a zillion times now from the different applications that are using the so-called AI uh, processing. But you can see how you use something like that. It will uh, recognize the elements that are in a scene and the noise reduction, let's say, on something that is very dark and maybe brick, let's say, in the scene is going to be different than is the bright blue sky. So it, it, it does a better job of removing the noise uniformly throughout uh, the entire image than conventional, like, like luminance noise slide or something like that. So um, again, I'll do a video. I'll go a little more detail in that in the very new future. We'll go back to fit to screen. You can see there. And uh, I think um, the only thing I want to do is I like a vignette on it. Now, it automatically removed any vignetting when it did lens corrections. Uh, but I think um, if you go to the drop, I'll go to manual. And I'm just going to, you can see how it's light now. And I can just go down and make it a little darker. I like adding a little vignette. It helps draw everyone's attention more towards the middle of the frame. So I'd say I'm pretty much done. Now, when I'm done, I could export it. I'll click on a little export button down here in the lower right. And you can see that it has a number of presets on the left. It has a standard JPEG quality at 90. Below that's a different JPEG where it resizes the image to 2048 pixels on the long side. It also has a TIFF uh, preset. So you could uh, just quickly export it as a TIFF or a DNG with the corrections applied. You can see that there's different uh, choices there. Now, um, personally, uh, let's say, I want to export it as a JPEG, but I'm not going to use that preset. I'm going to just say, for the sake of argument, I'll have uh, quality at 100. Um, I'm going to put it in a custom folder, and then it will, because I have a Mac, open up the Finder window. If you have a PC, it opens up a File Explorer window, and I'm just going to put it on my desktop right there. And uh, 300 uh, pixels per inch is fine. Uh, longest sign, nothing there. I don't need to do anything with that. I'm not going to do a watermark. I didn't prepare one for this image. And uh, ICC profile, um, I'm going to send it out at sRGB, which will be, um, so the colors will be true on just about any monitor you see. And I'm not going to remove any XF data, EXIF data. That's you know personal information, my copyright info and stuff. I'm not going to remove it. And I'll just click export. So it'll take that image and it will then export it to my desktop. So you can see how uh, the workflow is is pretty um, um, standard, like compared to other applications, and it's um, you know something natural. You would find an image to work on, decide how you're you know you the, the image you want to work on by looking at numerous images, bring it over into the edit area of Photo Lab Four, the customize area, and you could then start editing your images uh, from there, and then you could export it to disk. So. Again, uh, that's my first video ever on Photolab 4. Again, in the future, I'll drill down. I'll do some more detailed videos on some of the functionality. If there's anything specific you want me to do concerning Photolab 4, let me know in the comments below. And just remember in the um, description below the video, I'll have links to their website. They have a fully working free trial. If it's something that you're not sure you're, you, you'd use, definitely download the free trial and give it a go to make sure that it fits your style and your workflow, your preferred workflow. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.